Before I dive into what happened, here's a bit of background about me. I'm Kara. Let me tell you, nothing hurts more than betrayal by your own family. I wouldn't wish this experience on anyone. From a young age, my parents instilled in me the values of kindness and generosity. They were wonderful, compassionate people, so naturally, I grew up always ready to help others. Unfortunately, my willingness to help often led to me being taken advantage of, and I didn't take steps to stop it. That all changed with the biggest betrayal of my life, involving my husband, Archer, and my steps in Seth. I met Archer at work. I was an excellent student in college and landed a great job after graduation. Yes, the job pays well, but I won't disclose how much. Archer worked at the same company, being the son of the owner, Josh, who was also my ultimate boss. Josh mentored me, frequently saying, I can see that you are a great worker, Kira. That's one of the reasons I offered you the job years ago. You far exceeded my expectations. Thank you so much, Josh. Your guidance made all the difference. You remind me of my parents, who died shortly before my graduation. I know, Kira. I'm so sorry you lost them so early. Sometimes I wish Archer were a bit more like you. He never really focused on the business. He just likes to boast about owning a company and having lots of money. I wish he'd become more responsible, especially for Seth's sake. Maybe you can help him mature. I'll try my best, Josh. Honestly, I was relieved to know you approved of our relationship. I feared you might reject me. You're good for him, Gera. That's what worries me. I hope he changes and becomes worthy of you. Josh never had a great relationship with his son, and after dating Archer, I saw why. While Archer was charming and loving towards me, he wasn't kind to everyone else. He had little respect for his father and a very casual relationship with Seth, who looked up to him more as a friend than a father. When I first met Archer, he was quite the womanizer, so I kept my distance. Seth was born from one of his flings, and his mother gave up her parental rights when Seth was five. She wanted nothing to do with either of them. Archer often brought Seth to the office and left him with me. Seth and I bonded deeply, and eventually, Archer and I started dating and got married. Archer appreciated me and often said, I'm so glad I found an amazing woman like you. Most women I dated were after my money, but you're different. You've spoiled me and even taken responsibility for Seth. Why wouldn't I, Archer? Seth is like my own son. I know I can't have kids, but I'm glad to have found a son in Seth. You two have given me a great family. I can't believe you've taken on all of Seth's expenses. Dad won't promote me, so I can't earn as much. I'm so happy you help us maintain our lifestyle. Seth gets everything he asks for, and it makes me so happy. Looking back, I should have seen the warning signs. Archer married me mainly because I was willing to take full financial responsibility for Seth. He didn't earn much from the company since he wasn't fit for a high position, and whatever he did earn went towards maintaining his posh lifestyle. He didn't want anyone to know he wasn't as wealthy as he appeared. My income allowed him to place all the responsibility for Seth on me while he enjoyed his lifestyle. Despite this, I was happy to care for Seth and Archer. Seth and I were close, and I never saw him as a stepson, but as my own. He adored and loved me, and that was enough for me. One day, when Seth was 13, he came to me with a heartfelt request. Kira, I really want to call you mom. Would you be okay with it? I've been thinking about it for a while now. You're the only mom I know. My own mom abandoned me, but he didn't. What are you saying, Seth? I would be so happy for you to call me mom. You are my son in every way. I have never thought of you as a stepson. You are my child. Of course you can call me mom. I never thought I would deserve this title, so I never asked you to call me mom. You were the only one who deserves this title. In fact, I was hoping you would like to adopt me. My mom terminated her rights long ago, so you can easily adopt me if you want. As much as I love Dad, you are doing everything for me anyway. Oh my God, I would love to adopt you, Seth. You have no idea how long I've wanted this. I'll talk to Archer and start the process. You don't have to worry about anything. It turned out Archer already knew about Seth's wish. He was the one who suggested the adoption. I was elated that they thought I deserved to be Seth's mom, even legally. Little did I know, this was all a ploy to trap me and my money. Like the loving and trusting person I was, I went along with it. Seth, Archer, and I were living like a happy family. But as Seth grew older, his true colors became more evident. I was paying for his school, his car, his extracurricular activities, and even giving him an allowance. I didn't mind spending on him. 
while his father spent all his money on himself. I never cared about these things, but one day, my perfect world came crashing down. Josh passed away after battling cancer for two years. Surprisingly, he left the company to me, believing Archer was incapable of managing it. Seth and Archer received $3 million each. They seemed satisfied with their inheritance, unaware of a secret clause Josh had included in his will. He had suspicions about how Archer and Seth truly treated me, and he was right. I soon discovered that Archer was having an affair. He had been cheating on me with a friend for years. The worst part was that Seth supported the affair. The texts I found between them were shocking. I overheard their conversation one day. I'm so glad you found someone worthy, Dad. Your girlfriend is such a fun woman. I really like her. You have so much fun together. She's nothing like Kira. Don't slip up, Seth. You need to keep calling her mom. I don't want Kira to suspect anything. She might cut us off financially if she does. I know that, Dad. It's just hard for me to call a stranger mom. She's not my mom and never will be. I just don't want her to stop giving me money, so I keep pretending I like her. Your girlfriend is so much better. We need to keep up this facade, Seth. We can't let her doubt anything. Money is important to both of us. We have six million now. Why don't we just get rid of this woman? You can marry your girlfriend instead. We don't need Kira in our life anymore. I've been thinking about it. Soon I will divorce her and marry my girlfriend. I'm just waiting for the money to be credited to my account. Hearing this, my world shattered. The people I had loved and cared for were plotting against me all along. Hearing that conversation absolutely crushed me. I never knew this was what my husband and son truly thought of me. I couldn't hold it in anymore. I needed revenge. I walked in with my head held high and a serious expression on my face. There was no way I would let them see how much their words had hurt me. Initially, they were a bit surprised to see me, unsure if I had heard their discussion. I decided to clear up their doubts. I said, so, you're already planning to get rid of me, right? Well, I have some bad news for you. That six million you want, it won't be given to you straight away. Archer snapped. What the hell do you mean? You'll need my signature for it. Do you think your father was stupid enough to trust you and Seth with money? This is my father's inheritance. Seth and I are entitled to it. All of it. We are his blood. You are no one. Ultimately, you're just my dad's wife. Why would Grandpa give you control over our inheritance? I guess you two have shown me my place today. Good to know that I am no one to you. All these years I was just an ATM for you guys. It might sadden you to know that your grandpa granted you an inheritance only if I think you should get it. After I give my signature to the estate manager, he'll transfer the money to you. No, 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 that's not possible. Dad would never do that to us. Why don't you actually read the will properly to see what it says? I know you two saw six million and just started to celebrate. Here, I have a copy of the will ready just for you two. I handed them the copy and waited as they read through it. They went pale, unable to believe their eyes. Inside, I was laughing, but I maintained my composure. Despite their betrayal, it still hurt, and I didn't want them to see how much they affected me. I watched silently as Archer and Seth tried to comprehend the will. When the truth finally dawned on them, I said, I see that Dad put you in charge of everything. I guess it makes sense since you were so close to him. If you and Seth had even bothered to look after him, he wouldn't have done this. We don't want to hear that, Kira. Just tell us when you will sign the documents. We need the money. We can't wait forever. Now that I know what you two think of me, I'm not going to sign the documents. I won't give you two a penny. You don't deserve it. You can't be serious. We deserve the money. You cannot prevent us from getting the money. This is our right. I can do that. You do not have absolute rights over the inheritance. The will is very clear. However, if you still have doubts, you can talk to Josh's lawyer and find out. That will make things clear, won't it? Don't worry, we'll find out soon enough. I don't believe a word that comes out of your mouth. Once we get the money, Dad won't have to stay married to you anymore, and I don't have to call a stranger mom. Hearing that made my heart bleed. After years of loving Seth, he saw me as a mere stranger. I had stayed in a loveless marriage only because of Seth, whom I considered my son. His betrayal was the worst. I had no words left for them. I let them proceed with their plans. I didn't want to stay married to Archer or take care of Seth any longer. The next morning, I went about my day as usual. I went to the office and took over the work Josh had left behind. 
He trusted me with his business, and I intended to make him proud. But I hadn't forgotten what Archer and Seth were planning, so I made plans to teach him a lesson. I contacted two lawyers and prepared the necessary documents. Once Archer and Seth realized what they had done, I would present them with these documents. It was only a matter of time. It took a week for Archer and Seth to figure out that the will was rock solid. They absolutely needed my signature to get their part of the inheritance. So, they changed their tune quickly. They waited for me at home before I could return from work. Once I walked in, they scrambled to apologize. Kira, Seth, and I were talking about what happened, and we think that we treated you unfairly. You are definitely one of us. We understand why Dad left you with such a huge responsibility. You are a good person. Yeah, we were being stupid. With Grandpa's death and everything, emotions were high. We may have done something we regret. Oh, so you two have finally understood that you can't get six million without me. Good to know. It doesn't take much for you to change your tune. You were misunderstanding us, Kira. We didn't mean any harm. We were being extremely immature. We are family, and we should forgive each other. Mom, why can't you just forget it and move on? It was a small mistake. I'm sure you don't want to see your husband and son suffer, right? So I am mom again now, no more stranger. It's rich of you to call me family. I distinctly remember you two telling me that I am not family and merely a stranger. I guess a stranger can become family when they control your finances. Come on, Kira. Seth is a child. He made a mistake. Yes, I shouldn't have cheated on you, but it was a one-time thing. I ended things with her today. It will never happen again. Please forgive us. Let's move past this and start afresh. At that point, I knew it was time to reveal the decisions I had made. No matter what they said, I knew their behavior was fake. Archer had cheated on me for years, and Seth had supported him blindly. They showered me with fake love to maintain their lifestyle. The moment they thought they had lots of money, they planned to get rid of me. It hurt like hell, but I was done being taken advantage of. You know what? You are right, guys. We need to move past this and start afresh. Yes, I will be starting afresh, but without you too. You can't be serious, Kara. We are married. Seth is our son. You can't abandon him. You cannot do this to us. I already have. You two betrayed me in the worst way possible. I was heartbroken to find out that you were cheating on me, Archer. What hurts worse is that Seth covered it up for you. Seth pleaded. I know I made a mistake, Mom. I didn't know any better. You need to forgive me. Absolutely not, Seth. I'll never forgive either of you. In fact, here are some things that I have already done. I handed them a folder. I have filed for divorce. The folder contains the divorce papers and an eviction notice. You have one month to vacate my house. I'm done being exploited. Seth and Archer looked extremely panicked when they saw the papers. Archer started to shake while Seth had tears in his eyes. No, those emotions were not from losing me. They were just anxious that I wouldn't give them the inheritance, and they were right. They said, You can't divorce me, Kira. I won't allow it. What about my inheritance? What will happen to that? You need to sign it over to me. I'll never provide my signature on the inheritance papers. You two don't deserve mine or Josh's money. He knew exactly what kind of money grabbers you are. So he put that clause in his will. He was right about you two. Now that I know your true faces, I'll never put my signatures on those papers. Mom, Mom, please don't do this. We need that money. You're going to abandon us. Dad doesn't work a good job, and neither do I. How will we get by without an inheritance? You're kicking us out, but we have no place to go. Seth and Archer started to beg me to give them the inheritance, but neither of them even tried to stop me from leaving. That was the final blow for me. I gave them a piece of my mind and left them crying in their living room. I won't go into the details of what I said. It was very strongly worded and came from the bottom of my heart. Even thinking of what they had done still hurts me. But I stayed strong and didn't sway with their tears. A month passed after that, and Sith and Archer were forced to leave the house. Archer did try to fight me on everything, from the divorce to the eviction. But with very little money in his name, he didn't have the funds to do much. Plus, his lawyers made it clear that he had no legal leg to stand on. Thankfully, I had proof of his cheating. I live in a state where cheating on a spouse stops the cheater from getting any alimony or assets, so Archer was left with nothing. Since Seth was already 18, I had no legal obligations to pay child support. Archer ultimately agreed to a mutual divorce. 
he knew that it was impossible for him to pay the lawyer for a long time. I mean he did waste quite some money trying to get his inheritance without my signature. Seth begged me to stay in his life as his mother. Archer's mistress is apparently a minimum wage worker, which would make life very difficult for him. I know some people will not agree with me, but I want nothing to do with either of them anymore. Seth made it clear that I was just a money machine for him. I couldn't just forgive that. It's been a whole year since my divorce. Archer and Seth couldn't have their happy family after all. The mistress ran as soon as she realized that Archer had no money. Archer and Seth now live in a small apartment. Seth was forced to get a job because his father refused to fund his life. The two now have a very sour relationship and rarely speak to each other. They did try to contact me, but I rejected both of their attempts. I have moved on with my life. I'm seeing someone much better than Archer. We're taking things slow, so wish me luck that I can have a better life away from toxic people.